This is a second instructional video in a series of videos showing you how to make graphs in the um, program Logger Pro. Um, if you know how to make a graph that looks a lot like this, where you've changed the names of your columns and you've uh, removed connect points, if you know how to do all this, then this is the right video for you. If you wouldn't know how to make a graph like this on your own, then you should go back and watch the first video. Um, this, uh, this video is going to be about more complicated things than that. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is um, how to add a column for uh, information that you recorded, for data that you recorded in, uh, in your experiment. In this case, I've recorded not just the initial height when I dropped this steel ball, um, but also the final velocity and also the mass of the steel ball. But you notice I, I don't have another column to record mass in. Um, in order to uh, ask Logger Pro to give me another place to record data, I need to go to Data here in the menu and select New Manual Column. When I do this, um, I'll have an opportunity to name it. In this case, I'm uh, it's a column for mass. I'm going to give it a short name of M, and I measure that mass in kilograms. Now you might say, oh, where did it go? I, I made it, but uh, I need to stretch this window out in order to see it. You can change the size of this window as long as when you uh, hold the cursor against this black square, you see those two arrows. Um, I can also change the size of the graph window so I can see them both next, so I can see them both next to each other. Um, but you can see I have uh, added a column here to record mass, so I can uh, include the mass that I recorded here. Um, I used the same ball over and over again, and it had a mass of 0.11 kilograms. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is to use a value that's in this column, that is the final velocity that I measured, and a value that's in this column, that is the mass that I measured, to calculate some third value. Um, often in science, we have some um, calculated value that we can arrive at from measured values. Um, and we can do this with a calculator or, or whatever. If, if we wanted to calculate the momentum of this ball, then we could just multiply final velocity times mass. If we wanted to calculate the kinetic energy of this ball, we would have to use a uh, different equation. If momentum and kinetic energy are not relevant to you, that's no problem. The basic idea, the idea that I'm trying to communicate is that we want to use two measured values to make a third value. The really nice thing about Logger Pro is that we can do this automatically using a calculated column. I'm going to show you what I mean. If you go to data and select new calculated column, um, you can select the name of this calculated column, but first I want to show you what it does. Um, in this case, I want to just select final velocity. That is, I'm going to ask this calculated column to show me just the final velocity. This would be a very, very simple calculated column, but you can see what it does. That is, it takes the final velocity that's recorded here and types it again for me over here in a different column. If I enter a new value, say 100, then it types it again over there, which is quite convenient, but it gets better, if you can believe it. Um, if I double click on this calculated column, um, I can calculate something like, oh, I don't know, the final kinetic energy using the final velocity and the mass. Um, maybe I want to call this Ke sub F, and this energy in, is in units of joules. Here's the really fun part. Um, I can include an equation here to tell Logger Pro exactly how to calculate kinetic energy so that I don't have to do it with a calculator or do it by hand. The equation for kinetic energy happens to be 1 half 0.5 times, and I can choose from my variables, from the columns of data I've already entered, the mass of the ball times the velocity of the ball squared. Now, again, this is the specific equation for kinetic energy. That not, that's probably not the equation that you're actually going to be using at this point. Um, but the point is, I'm giving Logger Pro a set of instructions on how to use 
the number that's in a mass um, row and the number the number that's in the final velocity sorry the mass column for this one row the final velocity column for this one row to calculate a new value now since you're telling logger pro what to do logger pro knows a lot about um, like how to do complicated things in math but you have to speak a very specific language that is often when we're telling someone to multiply we might use this symbol an x that is 5 times 4 equals 20. Logger Pro doesn't understand that x to be a time sign. The only way that you can tell Logger Pro to multiply things is using an asterisk, shift 8. If you want to tell Logger Pro to divide, then you use a forward slash, which is by the question mark um, key. Um, or if you want to um, tell Logger Pro to add things, then you use a plus sign. And if you want to tell LogarPro to just subtract things, you use a minus sign. If you want to ask LogarPro to, to square something, you need to use a caret um, and then whatever power you want to take it to. The caret is shift 8, and you can square it or you can uh, cube it or whatever you want to do. Uh, in this case, I've taken final velocity and I've squared it. You'll notice here um, there are a bunch of other things that Logger Pro can do depending on what you want to ask it to do. This SQRT would take the square root of something. I might take the log or the natural log. Um, what you choose to do is uh, is de going to depend on uh, the experiment that you've done. But in this case, I just want to take 0.5 times mass times the final velocity squared. And you'll notice that Logger Pro has calculated for me um, every one of these values. This has saved me some time, which is nice. You'll notice, by the way, this is how it's using the short name. It's only because it doesn't have room to write the whole name, but if we stretch out this column, we can give it more room, and it'll write the whole name. That's the only real time when it uses the short name that you've given it, is when it doesn't have room to write the long name. Um, so, last couple things I want to show you. Um, after I've calculated this final kinetic energy, I'd like to graph it um, on my graph. That is, instead of graphing final velocity versus initial height, I'd like to graph final kinetic energy versus initial height. To do that, to change the value that's graphed um, on this, uh, this vertical axis, I just click on the title of whatever is being graphed on the vertical axis, and I select some other value here. For example, I can select final kinetic energy, and it changes the value of what's being um, graphed. In this case, I've got a scaling problem. It's a smushed everything down here because these numbers are so much smaller than the final velocity numbers. But we know how to do that from the last video. We can just um, double click on this main on this main graph region here. Go to axes options and change the y-axis to say from zero to two because this. Uh, value is at most 1.499, um, that's going to change the scale in an appropriate way. The last thing I want to show you um, is also a time-saving technique. Um, you'll notice, well, oftentimes when you're doing a scientific experiment, you'll do the same thing a number of times. That is, you might, you might do this entire experiment and then decide to do it again um, with all the same equipment, but you just want to repeat your experiment. When you do this, um, it's convenient to have all the same columns set up, especially this calculated column, um, since you had to enter that equation that you can see here. If we want to, if we want to ask Logger Pro to just copy what's here um, again, we can say data, new data set. And this will include an entirely blank set of columns um, in which we can record the same values or different values. In this case, I use the same ball, so I'm gonna include, let's see, I made, I made, took seven measurements, so I've got seven value, whoops, hold on, whoopsie, 0 0.11, what, there, all right. Um, I dropped this ball from initial heights of 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 meters, 
1.5 and 1.8 meters and I measured my final velocity to be 1.85 meters per second 2.87 meters per second now you'll notice when I type these in um, Logger Pro is calculating my kinetic energies for me because when I made that new data set it copied the calculated column um, from this data set to my new data set so I didn't have to retype that which is really really fantastic um, last thing I want to do um, now that I have these values is I would like to um, display them on the, on the same graph um, the best way to do that is if again I I click on this value or this this title that's uh, that's given on the on the vertical axis and instead of clicking anything any in individual value I click on more I can select in great detail what I'd like to graph um, in this case I want to graph not just the final kinetic energy from data set one but also the final kinetic energy from data set two and you'll see it graphs them on the very same axes, so I can look at them exactly at the same time. It's just called this final kinetic energy. Uh, I'm going to do one thing to change that. I'd like to double click this um, column to give it a title of, say, final kinetic energy run one, and give this one a final kinetic energy run two title just so I can tell them apart um, because if I do that then it's able to on the graph show me which color is which um, I'd actually like to change the, the color of this may not seem all that important to you but I think it's important I'm going to change it to dark orange and I'm going to change this to a an empty plus sign so in this case it's really easy for me to tell that the green squares are from the first time I did the experiment and the orange plus signs are from the second time I did the experiment. Now you'll notice from the uh, from the last video uh, we learned how to put a, a linear fit to these data. This also looks like a linear relationship for both run 1 and run 2 so I'm gonna go ahead and fit a line to it and you'll notice when I do that I get to choose whether I want to fit a line to data set 1 or data set 2 or both I'm gonna fit a line to both of them just so I can you can see that Logger Pro actually oh whoops Logger, Logger Pro is able to keep them separate um, so this is the slope and the intercept um, and the correlation value for run 2 and this is the slope and the intercept and the correlation value for run one. Um, let me go ahead and take these off actually because I don't don't really want them there. I just wanted to show you that you could, when you have more than one data set, also show more than one uh, best fit line.